Dr. Lou, there's been a lot of questions uh, with booster shots lately. The um, FDA scientists are now questioning the need for them, putting them at odds with the Biden administration. Can you explain the discrepancy there and if you think we will need booster shots? This is a really tough one. So, there, you know, there's no question that um, giving, so let's say, a million doses of vaccine to people who are unvaccinated is going to give us way more in terms of benefit preventing infections, hospitalizations, and deaths than it is to give those million doses to people who have already gotten fully vaccinated. That is not controversial. I think it is also not controversial that giving um, uh, doses of vaccine to people in other parts of the world who are not yet vaccinated, who want to be vaccinated, is in American interests because it helps to control the global pandemic. I think those points are not at all controversial. The controversy is uh, lies in whether the incremental benefit that we get from vaccinating people who are already fully vaccinated with a third dose actually justifies the use of those doses of the vaccine that way. I think that there is fairly good data now that people who are immunocompromised and people who are elderly benefit more from a third dose, but how much benefit there is to be gotten from people who are not in those categories getting a third dose is what is controversial. So there is probably some additional benefit, but not so much for preventing hospitalizations and deaths because being fully vaccinated with two doses of an mRNA vaccine or a single dose of the Johnson Johnson vaccine are still really effective for preventing those uh, bad events. So, um, you know, we are, uh, these are not easy decisions. And throughout the pandemic, decisions have had to be made with incomplete and imperfect information. I think this is, another, you know, we're, we're there again. And the CDC has to contend with the question of how can we additionally protect the American people when there is such a huge percentage of the population that is still unvaccinated, many of whom may not intend to get vaccinated, and it's getting harder to convince people to get vaccinated for the first time. And the Delta variant is still very much dominant. And we think that antibody levels that are higher may be more protective, or sorry, antibody levels that are higher may be better at neutralizing the Delta variant. How that translates into protection against clinical outcomes is a complete other consideration. I think that some of the uh, very opinionated um, uh, voices that you hear on, from the medical community on each side of this debate is not so reflective of not knowing the data. It's more reflective of competing priorities and different priorities. So this is not an easy decision. I can completely understand both sides of the debate. And I think many of us are somewhere in between in thinking we would want people who are not vaccinated to get vaccinated, whether they're in the US or elsewhere in the world. But there is this consideration of people who are already vaccinated saying, what else can we do to even better protect ourselves? But the bottom line is that people who are unvaccinated should still get vaccinated and that that is still our number one priority. Now, speaking of vaccinations, there's been talks about when to get children vaccinated. And in Cuba, they're starting to give vaccines to kids as young as two. Is that safe? I hope so. We don't know. The bottom line is we don't know because the data was not made public. It has not been published. It has not been posted as a preprint online. So we don't know. You know, um, I think that there are a lot of places around the world that are starting to vaccinate younger kids. And for the most part, the data has not been made available. I'm not saying it's not safe. It's just that we don't have that data. We are very lucky to live in a place where the FDA thoroughly reviews the raw data on clinical trials for vaccines that are being considered for authorization in the US. We are very fortunate that all that data becomes publicly available, is posted online. Anybody can look it up. 
as soon as they decide to move forward and uh, before we get our kids vaccinated. So I very much look forward to reviewing that data on children when it becomes available for vaccines that are considered by the FDA for authorization because I have lots of patients asking and I will go over that data very carefully before I recommend it to any of my patients. Now, with issues with the vaccine, there has been a lot of talk with misinformation as we've talked before. Um, rapper Nicki Minaj recently tweeted some misinformation about the vaccine saying it can cause problems with fertility. I'm sure you've heard this story. Um, how does this kind of skepticism about the pandemic affect getting the pandemic under control with issues with the vaccine and, and whatnot? So up front, we got to say that there are many causes of testicular swelling and infertility. The COVID vaccines are not on that list. So, you know, rest assured there. Um, there is a, still a lot to be discovered about whether the uh, COVID infection can actually affect your fertility. That's, you know, I think the jury's out on that. But there is some data on COVID infection actually affecting uh, other sexual function. Aside from that, you know, that aside, when, you know, it's, it's, this is a tough topic. You know, we, I have patients who have taken their time to get vaccinated and some of them eventually come around and some of them have died of COVID. And when our unvaccinated patients die of COVID, despite our best efforts to get them vaccinated or to treat them even after they get the infection, it is, you know, it's really horrible. I blame the widespread lies and all the falsehoods and misinformation that people are uh, fed. And uh, it, it is very upsetting when people who have huge audiences are on social media casting doubt on topics that uh, there is better information to be found. Um, the people we are seeing in the hospital with COVID are either unvaccinated or their immune systems are such that they cannot respond to the vaccine. And it's really devastating. You know, some of them, uh, and many die, some, are unable to move forward without a lung transplant, which is no walk in the park. It's not like getting your oil changed. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it is really devastating. You know, yes, even here in the Bay Area, this is happening. Um, I want people to know that if you're unvaccinated, you cannot count on people who are vaccinated around you to protect you because this virus spreads that easily and can be transmitted from people who are vaccinated even as the people who are vaccinated are protected from really severe illness, hospitalization, and death. You know, you guys have all told us that it's safe for pregnant women to get the vaccine. Is there a specific time within their pregnancy they should get their shot? So it is never too early in pregnancy to get vaccinated for protection of the pregnant person. Pregnant patients are at higher risk of worse outcomes with COVID infection and infections uh, also jeopardize the health of the fetus. So, you know, pregnant patients should absolutely get vaccinated. The vaccines are safe and effective for them and their fetuses. And if you're pregnant, please get vaccinated. If I were pregnant, I would get back, I would have gotten vaccinated already. And I tell my patients who are pregnant to please, please get vaccinated. You know, these days, pregnant patients should also make plans to get their flu shots. You know, we're in that season now and, uh, and that should be part of their routine care. As far as giving the baby some antibodies against the virus, the best time to get the vaccination is uh, before the third trimester. So uh, because the mother's antibodies pass across the placenta during the third trimester and get picked up by the fetus. So, you know, newborn babies actually don't make much in the way of antibodies for the first several months of life. So the antibody protection they have in their bloodstream is whatever they got from mom during the third trimester of gestation. This is not just for COVID antibodies, this goes for all other kinds of antibodies. Um, this is actually one of the reasons that we re recommend that whooping cough vaccines be given in every pregnancy just before the third trimester or just right at the third trimester because it boosts mom's antibody levels and it gives the baby better protection 
uh, once they're born because they're not going to have really anything else to protect them for a few months. Thank you so much.